and I actually I, I wanted this isn't uh, I, I don't want to put my resume out there, but uh, just to provide some context a little bit. Uh, in a former life, I was an assistant Division One baseball coach, and I was also working in a college admissions office as the NCAA liaison. Uh, so, just to provide a sense of framework, if you will, with my answer, and I wanted to actually uh, compliment David on, from St. Mike's on his answer because most of my bullets were going to touch on that. So nicely done. No, no. Uh, so I'll keep this very brief. Actually, um, I think for for. Uh, in the U.S., um, athletic opportunities abound. Uh, baseball, something about baseball guys? Yeah, sorry. Uh, <laughs> at, athletic opportunities abound. Uh, I do love the theme of being uh, the holistic approach uh, because in the States, uh, at least my experience shows me that uh, there's an equal parts focus on combining a, a rigorous academic program with a rigorous athletic program. We look at uh, and uh, David alluded to this actually, we look at the a, uh, field of play, whether it be the ice, uh, whether it be a court, whether it be a field, as another classroom. We are very intentional and very purposeful with the teaching that goes on outside of the classroom in that environment, in, a, in an athletic environment. Um, I think it, one of the things that John alluded to is the number one thing, I wanted to touch on that as well. In an environment, uh, where you combine rigorous academics and athletics uh, and really university preparation for athletics, you're helping those students, especially in a boarding school environment, helping those students become very self-aware. It is a, an opportunity for a student who maybe growing up had been the proverbial big fish in a little pond. Now they're thrust into this environment where they have to practice and participate in athletics with kids that are as talented, if not more talented. And really quickly, they are going to become self-aware and figure out kind of a pecking order on where they fit. Uh, and going back to the first answer that we heard today about fit, it's going to help students ultimately make a decision uh, when it comes to college and university uh, entry. Two more, uh, uh, three more, sorry, uh, things I wanted to note. Uh, and I, I was actually uh, talking to a colleague of mine, the athletic director at my institution, who's right uh, from locally here at Markham, in Markham. Um, and one thing he asked, he asked me to mention was, he said that families from, uh, from Canada just can't even fathom the amount of athletic opportunities that there exist professionally, whether it be working uh, in, a, in a private high school, working, whether it be working in a college or university, or working professionally in, a, in an athletic environment. There are so many different levels. You know, take a professional sport and it breaks down into many, many different layers. There are job opportunities. So if you have a young person, a male or female, that's passionate about being involved with athletics, there are thousands upon thousands of different opportunities that exist there professionally as a career. Maybe not playing. Your playing day days will come to an end at some point, unfortunately. Uh, but there will exist some opportunities to work professionally in that environment, and those are uh, uh, limitless, essentially limitless. The other piece there, uh, continuing on with the theme of limitless, uh, is the funding for athletics. There's a tremendous amount of funding at the college level, college and university level in the states, uh, when it comes to athletic scholarship or even merit-based scholarships that can help athletes as well. Um, so the funding, again, limitless is probably not the right word, uh, but it's it's pretty extensive.